Cause we love our love in different sizes. I love her body, especially the lies. Time takes its toll, but not on the eyes. Promise me this, take me tonight. Hello and welcome back to the Perfect 10 Show. We've had our international break off, but we're back for another episode where we chat about what's trending in sport and give you at home the chance to win £10,000. Ooh, it's a lot of money. That Ooh. is tasty, isn't it? We've got Pete on the panel. Pete, how are you doing? I'm not too bad, mate. How are welcome you? back to the show. Very good. You uh, haven't seen you since the Manchester Derby. That went well, didn't it? Yeah, that was, uh, that was a great day and I don't remember much about the afternoon, but I mean, we won, so... Top of the league. Play. Top of the league, unbeaten. What more could you want? Easy life being a City fan. And we've also let Anton back out of his cage and onto the show. Welcome, Anton. Yes, How are you doing? I've been let out on day release. Um, thank you. How's it going? Not so bad. What did you think of saw Bradley Dack on Soccer M this weekend? Were you uh, staring in your underpants? Yeah, I got up. <laughs> I was, actually. <laughs> <laughs> enough, I was. But yeah, I thought he came across really well on Soccer AM. He told an interesting story about how he was released from Charlton at the age of 14 for being a very small man. Well, you know all about that, wouldn't yes, you? Yes, I answer. would. And he also said about how Charlton had to look how tall his dad was to find out how tall he would grow, which I thought was absolutely crazy. Do you know how tall his dad is? I think he's about 5'7". Oh, very small man, isn't he? <laughs> very it? small very man. Small. Let's introduce our special guests for this week's show. On the right, we have Chris Brown, creator of the Under the Cosh podcast. Oh, unfortunately, he's not the one who used to date Rihanna. Well, well, unless you've got something to tell us. I do beat women. Have you started? <laughs> <laughs> you before you've been on it. No, 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 no. <laughs> we, we once, uh, me and Chris Brown, the other Chris Brown, we once uh, went to Vegas and we're checking in at his hotel room and uh, said to uh, the receptionist, <laughs> no, we've, uh, we've got a room for Chris Brown. I'm like, oh, fantastic. <laughs> so he uh, says, signing in with, says, there's a, there's a bill to pay. So I looks at Brown and I says, I thought we'd paid, I thought we'd paid. He said, uh, what's crap? Says, you bought the penthouse. <laughs> so, I, I, my fucking ass fell out, obviously. I'm, I'm like, what do you mean? Have you bought the penthouse? <laughs> so, uh, presumably, we nearly checked into the Chris Brown's <laughs> hotel room in Vegas. Blimey. <laughs> oh, you, you know Chris Brown as well, don't you? Yes, yeah, right? so a certain Chris Brown who had 37 appearances for Blackburn Rovers, number nine, star striker, didn't score one goal. I think we're on about the same guy. <laughs> I think we are. Yeah. <laughs> I think we are. Right, and also, we've already heard from him, but of course, our special guest for today is the unit that is John Parkin. Come on, man. Do you like it? I didn't get a clap. Like I'm not clapping myself. Yeah. <laughs> clap myself. We would have given away, in fact, we are going to give away a Preston shirt for today's show. If you can answer the question that is, who is Preston's current manager, A, Alex Neal, or B, David Moyes? Unfortunately, Preston Club shop need to pull their finger out. We ordered it about a week ago. Where is mm -hmm. it? Until? It's coming by stagecoach, I think. <laughs> it's the only, only I think, you need, a tougher, I think you need a tougher question, to be honest. Mm. <laughs> yeah. you, you haven't met our audience <laughs> they'll struggle with that one uh, let's crack on into our icebreakers with all of our guests of course we buy them a drink if they tell us their best drunken story Chris let's kick off with you what drunken story have you got you've been to some places so, yeah, well, there's, there's plenty not oh, the best one camera. Um, football related well, we might as well chuck that one in haven't we um, I remember what 17, 18 the, uh, you know when you had the clubs back in the early 2000s on, the, on the, uh, the outskirts of town and the industrial estates, the big uns. Uh, I remember going in there and it's a bit embarrassing actually. Nightclubs? Yeah, yeah, nightclubs. All oh, right. Not, yeah. Um, strip. <laughs> <laughs> I remember they had the, um, the uh, VIP lounge and it was always, you know, 17, 18, it was always the thing to try and get in. Yeah. And uh, I was used to, this is embarrassing now actually. I used to pretend I was a, a footballer. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. I used to get in at, like, to the point that I got in every week with a high five from the doorman. Klaus de Boer, signing from uh, Ajax Amsterdam from Bolton Wanderers. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Shakens, we used to come in, yes, uh, yes, uh, Klaus, Klaus, how are you doing? Yes, I am good, I'm good. Did you but, have to do that accent all oh, night? All, all night, all night, right? Why did you put a Spanish accent on? <laughs> well, this one night, um, um, Stig Tofting. Was sat at the bar. I don't even remember Stig Tofting, Danish uh, midfielder, powerhouse. He was 
he, he was an interesting character. He covered from neck down in tattoos. Not like today where it's cool. You know, it, it was like <laughs> 1920s freak show tattoos. <laughs> and uh, I think it, a tragic story really is, I think his dad shot his mum and then shot himself. And he saw it, uh, young, and like I said, tragic story. And then he joined the um, Hells Angels, absolute nutter. And he was, <laughs> I'm telling you. It's it's a happened. bit like us. He got sent home. He got sent home. He got sent home. Life stories of Piers Morgan. Well, they want to get him on. He got sent home from the 1998 World Cup for headbutting a waiter. <laughs> nutter. I went in. <laughs> I went in to Atlantis in Bolton. Well, cracking place. Cracking place. He had eight Smyrna Fices on the table. So I'd had a few drinks. Like, Stig Toft in his... So I went over. Yes, close I am, close to my... Uh, my, my father is uh, Danish as well. So that were it. We, I mean, I don't know why. It, it seemed like a good idea at the time. He was my hero. And uh, he started talking about places in Denmark, which I had no clue about. <laughs> but he had eight Smyrna Fices on the table. And he said, oh, I'll just watch my drinks. I'm going to the toilet. So, I mean, bearing in mind, this guy's been... He's a nutter. He's been sent home from 98 World Cup. <laughs> he went to the toilet. I'm 17. I'm not going to pot to, pot to piss in. As soon as he went, I'm having these. <laughs> eight smell of ices, straight downstairs, hiding in the corner. Why do you order eight smell of ices? Well, yeah. that was the thing as well. He, he drank one. Drinking I missed this. He used to be killing me. Since 2003, everybody's on him, aren't they? Ooches Ooch isn't cool Ooch. anymore. We're all on smell of ice. But he literally, just before he just net one. Bottle straight over his shoulder, smashed on the wall, bouncing in nothing. <laughs> that was Stig Tofty. That's what I'm not right. <laughs> 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 good story. Right, John, you've got some way to go to beat that. What have you got? I'm going to go for my uh, Magaluf, I think. Magaluf. Is this the one that was on this one that we didn't hear at the end of on Radio 2? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, 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 that were. Uh, that was crack no, that's out. Crack out yeah. So, <laughs> uh, Magaluf. So I was probably <laughs> 19, 20 years old, and <clears throat> the kid who I was rooming with, he, he didn't particularly like my rooming antics. You know, like <laughs> leave pissing on the seat and stuff like that. So he went out first. So I thought, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna shit in the bath. <laughs> As you do. Right, you're in Magaluf, aren't we? We're 20 year old. You know yeah, what I mean? What else you gonna Who do? Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? So I've, I've shit in the bath, I pull the curtains on the uh, the shower curtain. So later that night, we obviously on his night out or whatever, and, and I've pulled a bird, but uh, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> she was pissed, bless her. Uh, <laughs> You've been buying drinks all night? Yeah, I've been buying smell of ice all night. <laughs> uh, she was probably fucking, I bet Stig Tofty were better looking than me. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, uh, we comes out of this bar and it was torrential rain in Magaluf. Uh, and there were, have you been to Magaluf? I'm not. No? no? I can tell that by the jumpers. I can tell that by the jumpers. <laughs> I can tell they're not Magaluf, so the people with the jumpers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, there's, it's quite hilly and whatever. And uh, there were two guys in full body wetsuits who were aquaplaning down the middle of the street. Mm. There was that much water. So I'm walking hand in hand with this, uh, this Doris and suddenly, one of them takes her out. So this bird's gone sprawling all over the place and it goes purses all over the floor and whatever. <laughs> Picks her up, all her arms cut. So I was like, we need to get that cleaned up. Like, you've still got thinking sensibly in Magaluf, you know what I mean? You don't want an infection, do you? I've got the first kit, first day. <laughs> <laughs> so I says, come on, my, my hotel room's just here. So we uh, get back to the hotel room and opens the door and lets her in. I says, the, the bathroom's on the right hand side there, love. Go and get your sink cleaned up. So I've got to lie on the bed, like obviously a little spinning and whatever, and we had the shower curtain. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck <laughs> <are you> now, <laughs> I'm like, oh no. I thought, what, what, what is it, love? What is it? She says, there's a massive shit in your bath. <laughs> I says, no, I says, he's a dirty bastard in my fucking room with. So that's, uh, that's one of them. That's a good one. Great story, great Brilliant. story. Dirty pig. Dirty pig. <laughs> she weren't that bad. <laughs> she's not, she's not got knocked off. I'm not a complainer. <laughs> right, Chris, let's get back to you and uh, our special guest chat. If you want to quickly introduce yourself to the, to the watching audience, uh, tell us who you are and kind of what you do. Um, well, I'm Chris Brown, and we well together we do the uh, the Under the Cosh podcast, um, where we get 
a number of different players in each week, don't we? And talk about the careers and um, the the shenanigans, I suppose, outside of playing, not just not just the stuff that goes on on the field. Uh, I think we've. Well, Do you mean like shitting in a bath? Shitting in a bath like is that. generally, yeah. generally yeah. top of the list. actually more common than what you'd in think. In fact, if, if you haven't shit in a bath, you're not allowed on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do it and then I'm going to send you like, a request. For yeah, yeah, yeah. Show. We need <laughs> photographic evidence. Forget the ice bucket challenge. It's <laughs> <laughs> a shit in a bath challenge. <laughs> no, but we've had some great guests on. Um, but not just... Uh, it's not just the, the shitting in a bath stories, is it? As well, we had the likes of Baz Rathbone on who... who t- um, what was it? Kitman at Everton. And physio at physio Everton. Everton. Looking after Wayne Rooney's foot after he after he broke it uh, for England and and everything that goes behind. There's that. all sorts of stories. Isn't there? There's yeah. crack stories. There's career stories where people have fallen out of managers and how they've been treated by managers and how clubs have treated them and how they've um, instigated moves and all that sort of stuff and. Basically, just characters in football, which mm. there aren't really that many anymore. Mm. I think with John, John and Chris's connections, they know the characters within football, and we all we all get the usual stuff, you know, through BBC, Sky, everybody yeah. talking tactics. Mm. Well, we, we we want to dig a bit deeper in that, and hear the the stuff that we all want to hear about, yeah. really, as footballers, what goes on, fights in training, and stuff exactly. like that. And exactly. How did the idea for the pod come about, and when did it start? Oh my word! Um, I, February. Yeah, I I used to live across the road from Chris. It's as simple as that. And uh, we we got chatting, and I've got history in 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 podcasts and through social social media, working with football. And we said we were. They were obviously what shy. You doing now? They were obviously shy because you had to fucking drag us in, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and so we've got shit. I've got <laughs> shit history in podcasts. And none of them were very good. And um, so yeah, we we. We just uh, got to, you know, there's, there's a bit of an all in the market there for, for talking to players who are telling the truth mm. and honesty, which is what we've heard a lot about the podcast, honesty, players coming in and, and there's, there's no need for it, there's no icebreaker because you generally, uh, there's football talking to footballers and willing to be honest about it. Real so, insight into them. Yeah, exactly. Who's the uh, best footballer you've had on the show and what, what is the singular best football story you've heard, if you can pick just one? You should have prepped us on this. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, the thing is, it, it, it don't necessarily. It's not the. There's who's not had a correlation the, there. Who's had the best, best player and Who's had the best career or uh, who's yeah. won them on things? It's, it's, we're certainly not about that, really, are we? It's characters. Characters. Yeah. Being actual proper them rather than just speaking to a camera like Media a Premier trained, League yeah. players do, just an answer we've heard many times before, isn't it? Yeah, you do get a lot of that in the modern day, especially with City players, mm. you can barely get a straight answer. <laughs> out, can you? Yeah. Well, that's yeah. why <laughs> to mix it up a bit as well, because we've had players that have been regulars in the Premier League and players that haven't come out of League Two. Um, and we've had the, the cracks been there all the way through, hasn't it? No matter who they're from, and the stories are interesting, no matter what level mm. they've played at. It brings the game back towards the working man a bit more because we feel it's drifting away, don't we, Sam? Yeah, in Premier exactly. League? Yeah, yeah, right. We'll put a link to that podcast down below. Please do go and listen to it. Get all the views we can get from our uh, lovely Good audience. Job, yeah. John, let's get on to your career and hope we can discover a few stories from your time playing football. Um, do you want to start uh, by telling us about your first team debut for Barnsley? Do you remember what that was like and what your pre-match preparation was like in particular? To be fair, it weren't, it weren't like that back then. Uh, <laughs> I remember debut for Barnsley at 17, I think, but I only played, I don't know, four or five minutes at the end of the game. So I classed my full debut away at Bramall Lane. Uh, Stadium. So, yeah, it was, obviously it's a local <laughs> derby for Barnsley. And <clears throat> I didn't, I didn't realise I was playing until sort of quarter to 12. Nigel Spatman was the manager and uh, we went to the, the hotel for his pre-match meal and uh, one of the lads had phoned in ill, uh, so I thought I might have half a chance to get on the bench. Uh, and he came and came and spoke to me after after four and said, "You're playing." And I'm like, "Oh no, what's <laughs> oh no, what am I going to do?" <laughs> uh, so obviously, I only had sort of an hour and a half before we got to the ground to think about it, which was probably a, a good thing. If I'd have known about it the day before, I, I think I'd have probably phoned in sick myself, to be honest. Uh, so yeah, Bramall Lane. Playing center half at the time, 25, 28,000 people here, and I'm 
seven, 18 at the time, I think I were. Uh, and I can remember sitting in the, in the dressing room before the game and I'd sort of got tears running down my face and I was thinking, I, I don't want to do this. I was thinking, I know, I'm still emotional about it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking, like, I was thinking uh, as we obviously come out of the dressing room and go down the tunnel, I'm thinking, what can I do here to get out of this? I don't want to do this. I thought, can I just try and twist my ankle on purpose or what? And uh, honestly, obviously we went out and then there's a, obviously they start singing the song at Sheffield United. So the whole ground just goes full. Yeah. And I'm like, chip, yeah. Chip, yeah. Yeah. and then I'm like, oh my fucking God, this is getting worse, this. <laughs> uh, luckily we started the game. We went one nil up after sort of 20 minutes, I think. Uh, and I started to feel a bit comfortable sort of just before half time. And, and I saw I'm looking up at the bars, the fans thinking, fuck yeah, it's good this, isn't it? I'll be, I'll be right, mate, tonight in town. It'd be fucking fantastic. <laughs> just I'm looking up at the fans. Somebody clips the ball over my head. <laughs> Carla Saba runs in, scores the equaliser one all. I'm like, oh no, my fault for the goal. Uh, gets in at half time thinking I might get a bit of a bit of a bollocking or whatever. Nigel Spatman never said out to me. He said, look, you're doing really well. Keep doing, doing what you're doing. And went out second half and luckily we ended up winning the game two one. So. That was my, uh, my full debut as such. What's it like? You know when you first steps on the pitch, were you still like... I was shaking myself up just 10 minutes, yeah. aye. And then it's all just... So you sort of, yeah, you, know, you sort of like, just... You know what you're doing now. You sort of just get in... You just want to do your first thing right. Yeah. Uh, luckily I did. I think I did my second thing wrong, but my first thing I did it right, so it sort, sort of calmed, of calmed me down, down yeah. yeah. Peter Crouch said something that when he was playing for England, he used to look at the fans as he was on the coach on the way into the game and look at uh, just a guy sitting in the pub and wish he could swap places with him. Mm. He was yeah. that nervous. Did, was that kind of how you were feeling in the change room? I don't know if I ever went that deep into it. Uh, you still felt kind of lucky I, and wanted to do it, even though you were nervous? I, it weren't so much... I just didn't want to fuck up. Yeah. That was the main thing. It was a local derby. Obviously, 5,000 Barnsley fans had travelled, mm. and I just didn't want to mess up. That other man, I, I weren't really bothered how I did, as long as it weren't my fault for any goals, or I didn't make me the same look a dick. That was the main thing that I was thinking about. You mentioned your pre-match meal then. I've heard other pre-match meal stories for you, which involve kind of fish and chips and stuff like that, when you were not sure if you were playing or not, is that? Yeah, that was me. It were actually a... I was started, so obviously joined in July pre-season and it got to the first reserve game so I was 16 and it was just as they were changing uh, from five uh, three subs to five subs but the reserve team manager had not realised that the, the rules must have changed so we went in on the morning trained and then done all his jobs cleaned up mm. and done the boots and whatever and got this, the ground ready for uh, for the match at night so we went into town as like the YTSs and Obviously, we needed something to eat, so we, uh, we went to we went for fish and chips. Uh, <coughs> so I had fish and chips. We, uh, I was, um, still got a, an hour and a half, two hours to kill. So I dropped on a bird who I knew. Uh, <laughs> dropped on a bird who I knew. Uh, so I knew her quite <laughs> well. <laughs> Probably knew her a little bit. Well, I, I knew her as well before. But so we went and added a half hour. <laughs> uh, we went and, uh, and just eased a bit of the tension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She could make a nice coffee, bless her. Yeah. So we went, we went. And, uh, yeah, I'd not seen her for a couple of days. Uh, so then we get so we, as I said, we had half hour and got to the ground. Uh, the reserve team manager says, "Yeah, you're on the bench." I'm like, "What?" what? He says, "It's five subs now, not three. I'm like, "All right, no, but I'll not, I'll not get on, not get on." And, uh, Ended up coming on at half time and doing it in the last 45 minutes. Is that a tough game for you after the fish and chips? Can it, well, you feel I, it? I, 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 it it's went, kept the, up ever since. The, the, fish and, <laughs> the fish and chips were fine. It was, I was a little bit fatigued, <laughs> little bit fatigued from her coffee. <laughs> you've got kind of a, a, without wanting to be rude, you've got a bit of a love for Greg's going on, haven't you? Do you, do you like a Greg? Oh, I love a Greg. Oh, in the Greg's around the corner from our office. Yeah. Door, yeah. Door, yeah. Everybody likes a Greg's. This is the thing. Anton's favourite thing from Greg's? A ham and cheese baguette. Oh, that sums warmed you up, up, that does. Warmed up. Fucking pathetic. That is as bland as you Give me a steak bake. <laughs> steak bake. Steak bake. Can't go oh, wrong. I'm a festive bake, man. Especially this time of year. What's your favourite thing I'm, from Greg's? I like pepperoni pizza, me, I'll be honest. Ooh. Ooh. You know when you, you know like in Barnsley, in Barnsley, if you have a night, I don't, I don't go out very much now, but if, you know if you 
the Barnsley, the Greg's Greg's in Barnsley, Barnsley is the only Super Greg's store. I've been to with a doorman. <laughs> <laughs> often still, 24 hours. Often still four. So do you know if you were like finish your night and whatever and you're getting Greg's and they're just fetching the pepperoni pizzas out and you're putting them on the shelf, it's like you won't fucking lottery. Pa- you know pandemonium, I mean? it's great morning. Steak bakes all over the shop. Some people get them in for the some people get them in for the Sunday dinners on the Sunday. <laughs> just put some mash and a bit of veg with them. Well, producer well, oh, Charlie oh, out, out yeah. the corner of the eye. <laughs> what what is that she provided <laughs> Mr. John Parkin with his favourite oh. Greg's meal here. Let us know if we've got this right or not. Yeah. I, know you've, I know you've just eaten your lunch, a pie or something, but... Yeah. So, uh, thank you, you want any. Thank um, you very much. Just need to get that cucumber it. off that tuna sandwich. Is there a pepper on a pizza? Or <clears throat> I don't know. What's the, yeah. <laughs> if you get hungry, pepper Producer Charlie, crackling. what's in the, in the Greg's pockets? Whatever John's favourite is, I saw on Twitter about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Is this right? Have we got it right? It's not far off, love, yeah. Nice, yeah, right. I, I ah. could that. Thank you very much. And you were nice. mocking his research. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, sorry. My, my bad. Talking of research, um, I heard the story that you made up that you were in a car crash while you were at Preston. Is this, is this one true? To avoid, yeah, they're all, to avoid going into training? It weren't to avoid going into training. Uh, what it were, our my timekeeping weren't great, and I used to travel from Barnsley to Preston. You, your timekeeping's not best, is it? No, it's not great. Yeah. No. This is tough, isn't it? It's tough at it times, is. especially when you're going to get up early. Yeah. Uh, M1, M62, M66. You only live around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I've got, I've got M1. Then A to Z. <laughs> M1, M62, M61. We're yeah. losing viewers as the road names go to. <laughs> You've got to know these things. Yeah, I'd, I'd have took 66 personally and gone across M65. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still on my provisional. That's <laughs> why <laughs> 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 Sorry, carry on. Um, yeah, where were we? <laughs> Training at Preston, did you? Yeah, so I've, I've got, I used to set off at sort of 7 o'clock uh, to get in for 10. But it started getting gradually later and later, so I was setting off at sort of quarter to eight. So I woke up at half seven to set off at quarter to eight, and it <laughs> snowed. So I'm like, ah, right. So I've gone to obviously set off and gone to look at the M62, and it's fucking great. It's carnage. Oh, so I thought I'm off to Woodersfield. Uh, what cut, a place! Cut the court. Is that where you're from? I went to He's uni. known as Huddersfield's yeah. top shagger in his ass. He was in his uni days. Oh, they yeah. love the coffee in Huddersfield. Expresso, I heard. <laughs> Who came second, Shrek? <laughs> <laughs> wow. You <laughs> well, started firing shots before yeah. I <laughs> I'll bring up that goal record again. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Please do for your viewers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I went through Uddersfield, anyway, mm. Uddersfield were just as bad fucking gridlock carnage. So it gets to sort of half nine, no, probably a bit early, nine o'clock, and I thought there's no way, no way I'm getting in here. Uh, but Alan Irvine was like a stickler on being late, and so I thought, right, I can't, I'm not going to get in until 12, what can I do? So I thought, fuck it, I'll, I'll say I've had a car crash. Uh, That's like, pretty inventive, to be fair. <laughs> well, it, it, Outside it, the un- unfeasible as well, it snowed, yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean? <laughs> so I've... Uh, so I phoned us and I've had a car crash, uh, no problem, sorted it out, I'm glad everyone's all right. But the lads weren't having the, had a car crash. <laughs> uh, obviously they thought, rightly so, I were talking out of my ass. <laughs> but, so I think they were trying to find me 250 quid for not turning in for training. So I was like, I've, I weren't having that. I said, I've had a car crash. Like, no, you've not, I've had a car crash, I'm adamant had a car crash. And we were playing away on the, the, the Saturday, so we were in a hotel on the Friday night. So I says, right, well, tell what we'll do, we'll take it to court. Which is, in football, if you've got a fine and you don't feel it's right, you go to court. And it doubles if you get, if everybody thinks you're talking shit, or think you deserve it, or your fine gets wiped. So I look, I was staring 500 quid down the nose here for this 250 quid double for court. So I had to make it, I had to make it realistic. So I got a flip chart. Uh, and I, was, I drew a, a bit like an audience survey, a bit like a map. So I've drawn roads. So help you with drawn, roads. <laughs> <laughs> so I've drawn this map with roads, and I've sort of <laughs> talked through the accident. And then we went round the group, yes, like true, false. And he got to the last person, 
and it was Sean St. Ledger. And luckily, great player. He went on yeah. Taylor Swift, didn't he? he? Apparently so. Ooh. I don't think he did. He just said a picture of it. it <laughs> <wasn't>. <laughs> <laughs> you know more than us. It, it, it won't surprise me if he did. It would have done knowing Ledge. Uh, and I'll go palsy Ledge. I just give him the wink and say, "Help me out here." And he's, you know, it must have been ten all or whatever. And he says, "Yeah, it's definitely hundred percent true." So I got away with the. 250 slash 500 quid fine. The thing is, after a, a car crash, aren't you meant to take a picture? Surely that mm. would have been the uh, the be all and end all. That's what would have swayed me. If you didn't have Fucking a picture podcast of the car crash. Fucking podcast or a police interview. <laughs> 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 Sorry, officer. Well, 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 I'd have been having none of it. Full off the fumes. Of well, you said, it, you said false. Yeah. Would you? Yeah, you don't have picture proof. Might have it. I am known as Honest Johnny. He drew a picture. Come on, he's got time in here. I am I'm known as Honest Johnny in football. In the football club I play for, I'm known as Honest John. I never tell fibs. Like that, was, that, that, was, yeah. that were a £500 fib. Yeah, that's fair worth enough. It. Very, very worth it. Um, on the other hand, you went through a kind of tough spell when you were at Cardiff. Is it true you had to buy your own ticket to the Carling Cup final? Yeah. How did that come about and why did that happen? Uh, I played in the first two rounds, scored in the second game, uh, and then me and Malky had uh, fell out. It was probably a bit too tame, really, but me and Malky forgetted each other. Uh, and now we're on loan at Scunthorpe. So obviously, we got, we got to the Final of the Carling, was it Carling Cup. Carling Cup, yeah. yeah Worthington? Yeah. No, it was no, Carling Cup. It was 2008, wasn't it? So yeah, it was yeah. definitely Carling Cup. Well, well, a bit before. 36, not 36. <laughs> 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 so, we got, <laughs> so we got to the final. Uh, so I phoned uh, the receptionist at, at Cardiff and said, Look, what's, what's the crack? Uh, do I get any tickets or whatever? And uh, she said, I'll, I'll speak to the manager and then. I uh, got a phone call half an hour later saying, uh, no, there's no tickets here for you. What a bellend. I'm only telling you the story, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you asked. I'm only telling you the story. He took story. the words out of your mouth, didn't he? Let's be honest. I, I wouldn't have been as polite as that. <laughs> so I ended up getting, I could buy tickets. So I ended up having to buy uh, my own ticket for my own team's Calling Cup final. That's shocking, that. That's absolutely shocking. That is a disgrace, isn't it? You Tell me about it. Did you ever think, just, oh, I'm not, sorry, you're asking the question. No, oh, it's not, it's <laughs> not our gap. It's, oh, yeah. it's not our gap, this love. Why, did you not think, fuck it, I'm not going? i tell you why it were, because I, I've got some of my pals. Your pals and your mates. Uh, the pals were Liverpool fans. I managed to, so I think I, I don't know if I bought six tickets or whatever, and we went on the... Oh, you sold them, you made a profit. <laughs> That's what it is. Bob Market and the Wheeler Mark Dealer. <laughs> it's all coming out now. Face value, face value. <laughs> <laughs> Did you end up at the game? So, yeah, I went to the game. So we, it was a Sunday, so we went on the Saturday night. We had a, a Saturday night out and then went to the game Sunday and, uh, uh, and obviously watched the game. Was this where they had it? Was it still in Cardiff at this point or was it at Wembley? No, it was at Wembley. Oh, right. Yeah, it was at Wembley. It was uh, against Liverpool. Yeah. Penalties, was it? Yes, I it was. I think Steven yeah. Gerrard's cousin missed for Cardiff. Yeah, he did, hadn't he? Yeah. Good knowledge. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Good knowledge. So I don't know, I might, have even been, I might have even been due a medal. I don't know. But I obviously never... I didn't get a ticket, I went and got a fucking medal, what? Should have done it, John Terry got on the pitch at full time, yeah. didn't you, Paul Kitt? I'd have been, I'd have had fucking hands up back like that, wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> stewards. So yeah, so I bought, uh, bought my own ticket for the final. Like. Decent. Um, you also ended up with Fabio Cannavaro's Real Madrid shirt. Is this right? Did you swap shirts with Cannavaro? Yeah. How on earth did that? Uh, when I was at Stoke, we going to Austria on our pre-season trip. Uh, so we'd booked our hotel or whatever facility that, 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 that we'd booked and Real Madrid wanted that facility, the hotel and the pictures and whatever. And so they must have got in contact with Stoke and said, look, if you swap hotels, I don't know if they paid for it or what, but we'll play you. So we were like, Stoke were like, well, yeah, we'll, we'll have, we'll have <laughs> a game. Yeah, all right, then. Yeah, yeah. We'll have a, we'll have a game. Off. We'll have a game. And so... We got to Austria, they must have gone in our hotel, we went in our hotel and we ended up playing against Real Madrid. How good were they? Uh, if they'd have gone out of second gear, I think they'd have been fucking decent. <laughs> uh, who else was playing except for Calavaro? Like, 
That what's it called? Sergio Ramos. 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 Oh, yeah. Ramos. Oh, yeah. Ramos. Ramos or something. Mm -hmm. He was playing, I think. Casillas. Uh, actually, Chip, Chip Casillas from 40 yards. It landed just on fucking top of the net. Oh. If I'd have been, if I'd have been 43, I'd have chipped Casillas. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I just imagine it as being a group of lads from from in, you know north of England and some lads from Madrid just like stood outside an hotel. With, Fancy game, man. Fancy <laughs> game. <laughs> <laughs> Got some room. time to kill it. <laughs> it, was quite, it was quite surreal. Uh, and as I said, we lost 2 0 and they never got out of second gear. But after the game, we've gone out for a warm down and Real Madrid a warming down. And so I've gone and tapped him on the shoulder, kind of our own, sort of gesticulated, kind of get your shirt. And he said, yeah. And well, he, so gave, he gave me, I presume he said, yeah, I don't know. now got a John Parkin shirt. Yes. So that, that was the thing. I'm what I, I've, so he's given me a shirt, I've shook his hand and I've turned away. Obviously thinking he's, he's, he's not bothered. Yeah, fuck, he wants to want that. <laughs> so yeah, I've got a fella tap on shoulder and he's like, looked at me and like, so I thought, <laughs> this for real? <laughs> <laughs> this guy's just one world player at year. <laughs> so I, I didn't like getting body out best of times. <laughs> But not in pre-season. <laughs> <laughs> I've just had eight good well, weeks. I've just had eight good weeks. Uh, so yeah, so I give him my shirt and 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 I think it was. I, I, I've not read it myself, but there's an Italian paper that says it was the proudest moment of his career. <laughs> not surprised. I'm not. But surprised. I, I can't read Italian, so I'm not sure if there's a couple of words, <laughs> a couple of words that are not quite correct on that. I'm sure that's hanging uh, pride and center, oh, yeah. uh, above his mantelpiece. That, mm. that shirt. Um, did you also uh, crash a golf cart? before that game and injure a certain goalkeeper? I didn't injure a certain goalkeeper. Well, I nearly injured us both, to be fair. Uh, what were you doing in racing a golf cart before a big game against Real Madrid? It weren't a big game, really, though. Cause it, was it was a friendly, just, wasn't it? it was, yeah, it was friendly, yeah. so it weren't really... Well, we weren't a Champions League final. Uh, <laughs> we got an afternoon off, so we went for a game of golf. Me and... Well, I think I'm sitting there, I don't know, six, eight of us or whatever. And me and Steve Simonson were in the same buggy. And we got to the top of this hill and the tees at the bottom and never really grown up <laughs> myself. Uh, so I thought, I'm going to fucking see how fast this can go down this hill. So I slammed the anchors on and got to the bottom. I started skidding it. And I, I'm, uh, halfway through the skid, it's like, oh no, we <laughs> We're in bother here. She's going. So luckily, I'm on this side that I've spun it. So I bailed out uh, on the gravel. We build out on the gravel, maybe a roll or two, <laughs> and then this golf buggy is just. In fact, I can do it now. Now you've got me. Oh, <laughs> now you've got, why we now the now you've got me. Now you've got me. Now you've got, you got me the props. <laughs> so this is the golf buggy here, and then we've gone. Shh, me out, <laughs> golf buggy, boom, boom, oh, boom, hell. boom. Sim still in it. Simo still in this. Oh <laughs> so he's popped his head up, dazed, whatever. Cool running style. Yeah. Like. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Kissed yeah. his lucky egg and that were it. Wasn't yeah. <laughs> and he's was he like, injured? He were injured, so he's got up days and like, what the, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? So I've looked down at my leg and I've got like a cut on my thigh and all my shins cut and grazed, full of stones and whatever from the gravel and uh, I thought, I like, weren't bothered about my leg. I was thinking about the golf buggy. I weren't thinking about Real Madrid. Oh, of course. So I'll the, pay for it. The, the golf buggy's fucked. Uh, like the screen smashed, <laughs> both of the wires on the front are, <laughs> are bent in, the roof's caved in. So we're like, You have to take that back to the shop. Yeah, and that's that's that it. <laughs> this is a Cessna symbol, we're going to have to wheel her back. So we're pushing the golf buggy, gets it back to the club shop, the club floor. I said to the club floor, I says, I says it's, not, it's not safe for that. <laughs> <laughs> it pulls a bit too, it's not it? It pulls a bit. <laughs> so it's, not, it's not safe. Uh, <laughs> so I obviously fucking ranted a bit in Austrian, and so I, we just walked off. Uh, I went to see the physio. I said, "Dave, I've told him what had happened and cleaned my leg up." And I said, "You're struggling for it might be Monday. I might be struggling for Wednesday night." I'm like, "What do you mean?" So we've got Real Madrid. I'm like, "Oh shit, are we ever?" I'm thinking more. I were on a good score at goal. I'm three hundred apart. No, I'm only good. Uh, so how did you get injured? But uh, Steve Simpson was. was so I bailed. Oh, so you. Should, I bailed. You you were, it was like you were in a little dodgem car, weren't it? So he <laughs> were. He were fine. Down the hill. Yeah, he were fine. Nobody believed it. We had to draw a picture. <laughs> <laughs> you had to go through the panel. 
<laughs> so yeah, so I nearly missed the game. Nearly missed the game for well, you managed to, to take to the field. I think it actually, from. I think it actually made it into the sun. <laughs> Did it? I think it actually made it into the sun paper or a paper. It's a pretty good story, to be fair. It's a cracking story. Have you read the book? <laughs> Here we go. Oh, I'm, I'm off. Here we go. I'm off. Sorry. I'm sorry. You can plug whatever you want on this show, so go for it. I've got, well, I've got a book out. If yeah. you fancy reading it, yeah. read his book. Yeah. We Where might put that? a link in the description. We'll, we'll put a link. We can get yeah. a link yeah. in the yeah. description. Yeah. Did, you bring, is it did you bring a book for us as a gift? No. No. I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> them, I didn't know what them sort of duels did. I. You know, I, mean, I didn't think it was like Thanksgiving. We didn't, know we, had a, we didn't know we had a buffet on. All right, all right. I was expecting a prawn ring, if I'm honest. But, you know, we'll, we'll go to we'll we'll pepperoni that, feast. That, that, that'll be Amsterdam in a couple of weeks. Well. <laughs> <laughs> the prawn ring will be Amsterdam. <laughs> Chris, you're going to uh, Amsterdam, is that right? Yeah. Next week. Yes, we've got uh, PSV v, v final. Um, you, you've got a bit of a habit of seeing nil-nil. So, you're yes. Yes. Oh, you're stuck. John, so um, yeah, not only the YouTube channel, we've got uh, not only. Is it Andover? PSV. Oh, yeah. what a what? PSV. PSV Final. and Elden. And, and, oh, is it? Yeah. Are they the same yeah. team, yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I know nothing about Big football, Big football fan. Big football fan. Nothing about following uh, football. Not just the podcast, but we've got the YouTube channel as well, uh, which we've currently got a series uh, on the road in which we're, we're going to different big games across not just Who are they playing against? this country, but um, Feyenoord, oh. PSV. Nice. 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 And so it's really so that's a, that is a heavy, heavy yeah. bar. Oh, no, I'll get my teeth straightened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been to see a, a couple in the last few weeks. So uh, Sheffield Derby, you right? Is that yeah, right? we went to the Sheffield Derby. No, no, big one. <laughs> <laughs> we went to uh, Hamburg versus St. Paul. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, it was man. good, wasn't it? Oh. I, at, <laughs> atmosphere. The days. Atmosphere. I've never seen out like it. Mm. Right, in in. in in England, I've never seen it like it in my life, to be honest. It was just like, the atmosphere were unbelievable, weren't it? It's just completely different yeah, to what you get over culture. here, isn't it? And it watched the football. Yeah, I just watched the fans. Oh, we were just watching the like fans. Yeah. Like, I like that, that could have been fucking anybody playing. But that's yeah, the thing, yeah. I don't think they were necessarily watching the football. The, the main thing for them, I don't think, was even the result. It's just crazy Obviously, it played a part, but... I think the battle between the fans yeah. was more of a spectacle. Like the yeah. singing battle, like the, the yeah. singing battle, not the fighting battle or No, whatever. no, no, yeah, just the, the spectacle that they wanted to create. I mean, I've had it, game. obviously, so I'm a City fan, as people know, and obviously our crowd isn't amazing. Yeah. We have, we've played final, I think, last season, and like the, the actual, the noise that the travelling fans make is, there was about 3,000 of them, and I was just out like, Wow. It's a different well, mindset. It is. It it is. Crazy. Crazy. It's a different really mentality, is. a different mindset. But, it's um, great to see from your experience, Europe though, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. It. You can come on the yeah. trips. So you can come on the trips. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Charlie, yeah. what are you thinking? Sportsman always. Sportsman always resurrected. <laughs> Any more plans in the pipeline, or is it just Amsterdam for now? Yeah, no, I think we're, we're looking at doing five or six games over the course of Milan, is it? Good yeah, stuff. I think we're looking at Milan. Well, we went to Celtic Rangers as well. That was good. And we're just trying to get as many of the bigger games yeah. with the with the atmosphere. Yeah, not, it's, it don't matter where I'm not like Barcelona Real Madrid, like everyone's sort of seen them. Mm. Yeah. Like I, I didn't even know mm. San Paulo were a team, yeah, if yeah. I'm honest. And I didn't know Hamburg against San Paulo were a derby. Uh, but then obviously when I've got there and realised what it's what it's actually that like it's it, it I say I've never seen it like it. It's, it's more about experiencing it from the fans' perspective than it is the game itself. And in Hamburg, St. Pelle was certainly an eye opener on that front. How much were tickets? Do you remember? It's quite cheap tickets like the engine. Yeah, I mean, well we were done. chatting with you were chatting with a season ticket holder, weren't you? The, 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 the season ticket in the behind the net in the Hamburg. Bounce, like, oh, yeah, 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 the, the proper end. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the standard. With all yeah, the ultras. Yeah, yeah. The standard. I think you said it was something like 180 euros. It's Amazing. not bad, that, is it? It's so, not it's, bad. That's, that's, that's obviously Bundesliga 1, is it called? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a championship. Yeah, but yeah. even well, still, I mean... Hamburg are a huge team, though, aren't yeah. they? Uh, right, let's go and check out the Under the Kosh YouTube channel. Is that that's what it's called? Yeah, Under the, Under the Kosh without the E. Without the E? There's no E, because somebody got there before us in Canada. So we have to oh, under it. Yeah, I know. Right, excellent. Anyway, check that Bastard. YouTube channel out. Uh, let's crack on <laughs> into our top trends. 
There's only one place to start. What a week for England, Anton. It's been brilliant. The UEFA Nations League has won us over, hasn't it? It's absolutely fantastic for mm. a competition. What did you make of the Croatia game? One of the most exciting England games we've seen <laughs> since the summer. Yeah, very, very, very good, Simon. <laughs> yeah. I'll, uh, I'll assess in 66. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you 90 or 66. That's the only ones for me. <laughs> Yeah, excellent. There's so it? many positives to go off, really, haven't we? From the youngsters to the change of formation, everything's going very well at the moment. The Nations League, John, you're, you're a fan, you come around to it? I didn't watch, uh, the, I didn't watch the game the other night. Croatia. Yeah, what, what night was that? Sunday, Sunday night. Two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I tell you, I was at skate park with my little one, oh, uh, yeah. so I didn't watch that. I didn't, I didn't know it were on, to be honest. I didn't know it were on. I watched the, uh, the one on few nights before we won that USA. Yeah, yeah. Friendly. Friendly. I tell you, I'm more, I'm more impressed with uh, the kid for USA than anyone. Pulisic. Is that, yeah. The winger. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah good player. Yeah, I thought you were best player on pitch. We linked with the Premier League move a few times, Liverpool and yeah. Chelsea. One, really? I think. Yeah, yeah, not bad at all. Um, this brings me on to my next question, which is, would you rather see uh, your club team win a trophy or England win a trophy or your country in Pete's case? Where do you lie on this one, Anton? Your, your team Blackburn, yeah? Yeah, Blackburn Rovers. Obviously, I just missed out well, on say, uh, Premier League. Yeah, we're a bit too young. We won Worthington Cup in 2002. Are you sure it was called that? <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, <laughs> Little Woods, <laughs> Rumbelows. <laughs> Not quite, but I think I'd have to go club. For me, winning the Premier League, I'll never tire of the tales from people about Blackburn winning the Premier League. You know, it was drank dry that night. So for me, it's, it's your club. John, where do you sit on this one? Do you have a, a team you support still? Or yeah, you? Barnsley. Barnsley, yeah. But not doing badly in League One, pretty good. Yeah, mm. we're doing really well, to be fair. I've said we. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're doing incredible. We're doing incredible. <laughs> the manager's doing a good job. Uh, I'd like to. I'd like to see the country, to be honest. That's exactly my viewpoint. I think the summer just gave everyone a taste of watching a game together and yeah, just going I mean, absolutely nuts. We, we, we did videos for them, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. We did like we watched every game. Together, didn't Toget we? we have it together. Oh, wow. How oh. nice! So nice. it was like a gobble box type thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we similar set up to this. We're just watching the game and uh, but we're like pundits, but just saying it like it is. Yeah. yeah. Like I came Delhi Alley for the whole tournament. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Delhi Alley shit. Yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> Even when he scored against Sweden. Yeah. You get Delhi off <laughs> <the> shit. <laughs> uh, so it will, that were that were good, but I mean, same as you said, the, the everybody, even like people who are not really that asked about football, sort of go with it and get involved in it, and mm. it it just sort of lifts everybody, I think. Mm. Chris, where do you stand on this one? Uh, for me, country again. I mean, I'm a Bolton fan, kind uh, of, uh, but I I was a seen to call for eight years, and then we got to the. Carling Cup final. <laughs> and, um, they played Middlesbrough. They played the Middlesbrough. The competition's never had this much. I know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I couldn't get a ticket. 2004? Yeah, oh, yeah. So, so far, I yeah. kind of washed my hands of the club a little bit then because I thought, well, I'll give you eight years of, of support, service. Yeah, yeah it's outrageous. <laughs> and uh, support, and then I couldn't get a ticket. Just think it's like being a player for I the know, football yeah. club and you can't yeah. get <laughs> <laughs> but you know, to buy a ticket for the final of John, you know, the, seven, then, <laughs> they cocked it up, and I just and now I kind of watch from a distance. And I always said I won't, I won't pay to watch. So for me, now I'm more of a, uh, it's a bit sad, really. I'm more of a football fan than, yeah. than I, can, I, I feel like I've turned me back on the club there a little bit. But I'm being, no, but honestly, on you. honestly, yeah, exactly. <coughs> for, to 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 buy a season ticket, a support street, club, for eight, eight club, and then not be able to get a ticket to the final, I kind of said, well. You know what I mean? So, yeah, for me, England. Hey, I know you're very uh, on one side of this argument. Yeah, obviously for me. So, I support Ireland he as my mum's Irish. <laughs> it doesn't pretend to be Ireland. Like, I support Ireland, which isn't a good thing because we're so terrible. Club level, then, let's so, be honest, you're not club, win. yeah. So, obviously, <laughs> obviously grow, I'm a City fan. Obviously, growing up, we were just so bad to watch. But now, I remember watching the, I was there for the Aguero moment. I was there for the FA Cup yeah. and all this and all that. And it's just, for me, that's something that will never, ever be topped, no matter what happened with any country. No matter, like, I was there for the Aguero moment. That's, like, 
the, probably the peak of my life. I was running around the garden. I don't no, you want to get on Tinder? Tind- you want to get on Tinder? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want don't, 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 this to see. Like, I hope she has a, I hope she has a tune the, the peak of my life is when Sergio was... three quid. Honestly, but that that is just now, that's something that I don't think I'll ever experience again. And I just can't. I think that moment, though, is... Is I don't think most I don't think that's tied no. to most, City in yeah. general. That's just sort of most football, football fans. In fact, probably any. There's not many football clubs who have had that mm. moment. Yeah. Mm. So that's. I think that's a football thing as opposed yeah, no, to. No, a, I, get, I, I support Man City. No, 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 I, I get that at the same I mean. time, but then it is. It's just there. Like at the same time, it's like this is like you know I've been waiting for this because we started getting bigger. We started. We got to home. How do you feel now though? Now you know you're this club. This this brand. This machine. Dirty club. It's it's a weird feeling. Being there from the beginning. Because I've watched us in three different divisions. So I'm 21, so I've seen us in... Uh, oh, I've hey, seen look, it, it were. It were. I'd been a City <laughs> fan back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were here below me at school. <laughs> Well, uh, so yeah, I've seen us. You know, I've seen, uh, like, when Stuart Pearce was in charge, we didn't score for half a season at home. And it was there, like, some of the stuff that I watched was terrible, so... Ben the, Johnny was all right, wasn't he? No, he wasn't, he was <laughs> awful. Um, it's like winning the FA Cup, I was like, oh, shit, what's <coughs> happening here? Yeah. I don't think this ever happened. And then when we won the Premier League, it was there, like, Christ, like, you know, this For this happened, so. country v club debate, I think, for me, this has been the best football year. I'm a Coventry fan, so we had promotion yeah. at Wembley this season, mm. and England reached the semi-final of the World Cup, and... My favourite football moment of the year was us winning the penalty shootout of the Colombian. Everyone yeah, going yeah. nuts. The one singular moment of just absolute That feeling madness. of winning a penalty shootout. Whereas so. with Coventry, it was just relief more than joy. It was, it's, it's just such a hard slog. You've got to be relief. a little bit realistic of what club you support. And yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, I mean, a promotion is obviously incredible. But if you're Coventry getting promoted from League 2 to League 1, weren't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's not... It was just where another step where yeah, to if it, were, pr- if it were championship to the where they've been for all them years mm. to the Premier League, and I think it's a totally different entity. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you know the Aguero moment. Yeah. You might be a bit young, but the uh, Marco Thomas. You, is it Arsenal? Is no, I'm thinking of Man United Man. European Cup. Oh, oh Solskjaer. Yeah, Solskjaer yeah, yeah. moment. Yeah. That was yeah. as, uh, yeah, as iconic. Moment. And I'm not asked about my new home, Man yeah. City. But that was an iconic moment as the Aguero for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no, I'd agree. For a whole football It's one fans. of the reasons I love football, a moment yeah. like that when I was about eight and it got me into the game so much watching that. That was all I knew at the time that we were on TV, we couldn't afford Sky. Mm-hmm. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, just got oh, Sky. We don't have Sky. We're still living in a box. Please, please. You're still on dial-up, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> right, comment down below if you'd rather see England win a trophy or your club. Uh, let us know. We're pretty split here, I think. Um, Pete, let's talk about the rugby game that happened yes. this weekend for Ireland versus New Zealand. One of the best rugby games I've seen in the last few years. Absolutely incredible. It's How just... many rugby games have you seen? <laughs> <laughs> One of the At best two that he's seen. Even got that, like the Johnny Wilkinson kick. Yeah. <laughs> That's his iconic yeah, yeah, moment yeah, as the Aguero. Yeah. Um, I think it was just, you know, you've got the two best teams in the world playing each other um it was so it was just so close as a game obviously 16-9 to Ireland there's so many standout performers from the Irish point of view Rob Kearney I thought from fullback was just absolutely phenomenal nothing got past him Stockdale on the wing the guy's got fucking jets in his boots like. the defensive performance in the oh, last 20 just, minutes it was, was so ridiculous. so I mean and obviously you know it's what it's one of them games it was that you know it's the best two teams in the world and everybody you don't want it to be one team just winning 30 nil or something. You want it to be a close, which is what it was. It was both teams. One try it. in it, wasn't it, in the whole game? Yeah, it was both teams giving it their all, which is, again, it's, it's what you want. And um, and obviously... Is there a lad from New Zealand who plays for Ireland? Oh, there is. I can't remember his name. He's a forward. Yeah. He's in the second row, but I can't Good remember Good research, Pete. Yeah. But... You weren't so, expecting that, were you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's read that, that sheet before. He's well, that's for your fucking 40. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, now it's leading on into the World Cup, World Cup next year in Japan. Um, Can I just ask a question, please? I'm a bit <laughs> ignorant with, with rugby. How come Ireland have got so good all of a sudden? Mm, yeah, it, it, it goes through stages. I mean, England, when they got Eddie Jones, they went 21 games unbeaten or something like that. And it's Ireland have always had a good... 
core. They used to have O'Connell and O'Driscoll and players like that, but they were never. They never. They were never. No, they weren't. But they've just. I think the team that they've got now is just so solid. Like from forward, from you know, prop to fullback, just everything. It goes in cycles, like most. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah, they've all. Every single position seems to be filled with world class players. And it just and it showed against New Zealand. I mean, if you play against the All Blacks, then you know you've got to perform to win. And they did. They were. This should be a incredible. simple question for you to answer, now, Pete. Can they actually go and win the World yes, Cup? Yes. Yeah. They're gonna. They're Next gonna September. Be up there. They're, they're gonna be up there. England are gonna be up there because England. Three to one second favourite. England now. always tend Even to form. New Zealand. <laughs> except for the last one, obviously, when England were at home. But they tend to step up for World <laughs> Cups. Um, you're always gonna have your New Zealands, your South Africans, and Australias. Ireland are going to be up there. They're, they're too good not to be. If, They've proven if, they can beat the best now, haven't they? If, so. It reminds me, though, if, if they don't do well, it'll sort of be like a Belgium at the World Cup. You know, they've got they've probably got the best squad in the world and they should be doing something. It's the experience they're behind. Yeah. Well, so how long, will, how long will this Irish team cycle last then? Um, it could be Not a few years. <laughs> it, it Is the World be. Cup in uh, three days? <laughs> <laughs> you've got players like Sexton and Kearney who have been in the team for a long slog now. They've been in there for a good few years. And then you've got players coming through the forwards like Omani. You've got Jacob Stockdale, like I said. You, like, they could go for three or four. It could go to the next World Cup in 2023. It could be that long. Like you don't got, know. That's what he's saying. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it sounded as though he knew we were on about, so <laughs> it's, it got me. Yeah, have a steak, mate. Means a lot. Right, Anton, I know you're itching to talk about Down Under. I'm not talking about your recent visit to the STI clinic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about. I'm I've got to have a shag first. Yeah. <laughs> We've, we've seen Harry Redknapp on the slab, haven't we? Yeah, How's he been getting on? Triffy. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, terrific, yeah. Well, yeah 500 grand camping, yeah, terrific. 500 grand, is that what he's getting? Yeah, yeah. But no, he's had some great anecdotes and stories. Once how he met Princess Beatrice, things like that. Met, met Prince Harry without knowing and thought he was one of the players from his club. But it looks like he's going to be a really good watch and uh, it's a good laugh. Have you been watching it, John? I have, yeah. I'll be, I'll be watching it every night, yeah. Any other uh, contenders you've got your eye on in there? Anne Hegarty, you a fan? <laughs> Well, I haven't wanted to wrestle here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Have we seen Noel Edmonds? That'd be a good fight, I yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think he might be in tonight. I, my missus, my missus uh, her sister used to go to school with Noel Edmonds' uh, daughter. Um, my missus' mum and dad and Noel Edmonds and his missus were actually friends. They used to go around to each other's house for tea and that. Mr Blobby of Eternal? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know her back then. <laughs> <laughs> So that was just a, tr a total trivia piece of information, but... Uh... Who do you want to win? So next time you get in a quiz and they're asking, you know, who, who may have known Noel Edmonds' daughter? <laughs> you, know, you know exactly who it is. It's Mr. Marcus, Mrs. Mum and Dad. Sister's brother. Dog. dog. I tell you what I think might win it. I, 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 Fleur. Mm. She's got a bit of something about her, doesn't she? Oh, she's bit of Fleur. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's oh. bit of Fleur. But apart from that, because I think she's just that happy and I don't think she'll ever get pissed off. I, I can see Harry cracking up. Yeah, I think Harry, he might. He tends he, to quit a lot of his uh, football <laughs> management job. And Southampton uh, showed yeah. on the tweet. <laughs> Do you know, like, when, he, when he's, he's going to start getting pissed off, Harry, and he's obviously used to having everything his own way. So I think he could end up, uh, like, just exploding at someone. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. What sort of fucking pot? What is it this? Mistakes, <laughs> 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 everyone on this show. There's them on this morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like he's a nice bloke, Harry. He's gonna, <laughs> gonna crack up. You've been watching it. Uh, uh, I've seen bits and bobs. Yeah. Um, I think who's gonna win? Yeah, go for it. Charlotte Big Jugs. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. For right. one reason and one reason only. Personality. Yes. <laughs> Right, let's move on to the Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder fight next week. The sportsmen are, in fact, teaming up with Betfred for their Fury Wilder campaign. So stay tuned. We've got cameraman Seb Go going on, to our legs. Seb, He might be filming himself on a beach somewhere. We don't know. We'll see what Nobody content wants he comes to out see with. That. Nobody wants to see that. So uh, get involved. We'll have loads of content coming from the fight. Pete, give us a quick prediction for the fight. How do you think it's going to go? Oh, it's a hard one because Fury... If he's at his A game, then I think Fury wins. But 
Wilder if he catches him then. It's really hard. I th I'm going to go with Fury on points. <laughs> I think. Can you do your impression of Tyson Fury? Say, oh, you big stiff idiot! <laughs> like a bodybuilder, you? I'll knock you out and run rings round you. <laughs> so now you've done that, can you do your Tyson Fury? <laughs> <laughs> you big stiff idiot. <laughs> no, so, yeah. Uh, Pete, what, what are you going with? I'm going to go with Fury. I think. I, I think he's the first couple of fights. It was a bit of a joke, like that first one. There was a bit. It just seemed like a bit of a piss day, but. Hopefully he's right up here, and if he is, then mm. I think he'll go for it. I think he'll run. I think he'll. His boxing ability is better than Wilder's, so I think Fury on points. Chris, you've been keeping an eye on this this build up to this fight. Nope, no. John, you've been keeping an eye on it. I, 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 <laughs> Fury's come back. I've read an article about it today about obviously the ten stone or whatever he's lost since uh, yeah. since he started going like sort of getting his head back on boxer and that, which I think's like out, outrageous. What is actually what he was, and then where he got to. The comparison pictures are incredible. Yeah, uh, not, not just his weight, obviously mm -hmm. his mental... Mentally as well. Uh, it takes yeah, mental, mental, mental strength to get to oh, where God, he is, yeah. isn't he? Well, he's it's, it's obviously gone full circle, because right? he's obviously mentally been in a bad place, and then thought, oh, fuck this, and yeah. then he's managed to pull his same back. So I, I, hope he, uh, I hope he wins and gets all his belts back yeah. for that alone. That's what we yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, I think they all do. I'm going to go with that. I'd like Fury to win. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Right, Simon, what about you? I think Fury's going to win on points, which brings us nicely onto our predictions table. <laughs> Unfortunately, nobody won the Manchester, got, got any points in the Manchester derby last week. I think. No, that's bollocks, because sure. I predicted. Yeah, I, predict yeah, I did too. Win. Hang on, who's written this? Yeah, perfect perfect four, four, so none of them. Oh, perfect oh, four. We had to get the same. Perfect four. I don't know what the scoring system is. We'll blame the producer. Oh, we're not bothered, are we? Nah, right. Oh, uh, we want a prediction for Wilder Fury. Who wins and what round? Um, Pete. Like I've already said, I think. Yeah. Fury, I don't think he's going to knock him out. Um, so Fury on points. Chris, just say anything. Um, yeah, he's going to win. He he's going to win um, fourth round. Which How many one? rounds are there? Which one? The oh, uh, Fury's going to win. Twelve rounds. Maybe four, twelve rounds. Uh, tenth round. Tenth round. I've got an interesting story about Fury. Actually. Go on then. Go on. He, uh, he, all, he all, his gym is literally ten minutes from where I live. And there's a there's a sandwich shop across the road, a butter shop. Fuck, I bet they do well. I tell you what, <laughs> I, bet they I tell you well. what, I went in. I went. This is the height of his training. This we're getting three sausage and egg and bacon balms in the height of his training in front of me in the queue. And he stepped back and uh, stood on stood on my foot. <laughs> Honest to God, and he turned around. And went, oh, sorry, mate. I said you fucking won me. <laughs> <laughs> I took a no, I'm only joking, I'm only joking, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Out. He was alright. I'll, right. I'll, I'll take a sandwich off him. <laughs> John, you got a prediction? I don't, really, I don't really know much about boxing, but I'm going to go, I hope, Fury 7. Anton? I'll go Fury on points. Oh, that's what I was going to say as well. I was going to say Fury. I'm going to say Fury on points. I think we've got to believe. Team Fury, come on, let's have it. But for this weekend, obviously that's next weekend, we're going to look at Tottenham Chelsea. And I want, we're doing a double prediction round this week. Uh, Tottenham Chelsea, the big game in the Premier League this week. We just want a score prediction. Is that tea time? Tea time on Saturday. Tea time. Well, you're tucking into your jacket potato, Anton. Uh, I'm going to say 2 all on this one. Anton, you? Desmond. I'm going to go 2-1 to Spurs. And it, it, that it's at Wembley. It's at Wembley. Mm, yeah. I'm gonna go two one Chelsea. Two nil Spurs. Three one Chelsea. Three one. You think they're title contenders? I really do. Yeah. I think they'll run us close. I think Sarri's done very well since he's gone in. Right. Yeah. Let's move on to the game's gone segment. Anton, this is usually your little bit, but John, this week we're coming to you. Yeah. Have you seen anything? The game's gone in your football career where you just think that the game has absolutely gone since you started all them years ago to now has anything just been like oh people went after shave on the pitch well, you mentioned that, that was the one we heard on peter crouch's podcast this week sam have about... we plugged that enough this, this show? Mm. i don't think we have no, no peter I don't think we have, sam. you after an invite on that show i am yeah take me on take me on <laughs> but no he's he'd make you look like a that's very a different small show, that's it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> young lads we're in aftershave before a game, I mean. You never know, do you? What about? <laughs> what are you playing against? Do, do you want to mark someone, be marked by someone who stinks or someone who smells quite nice? Good, good point. I'd rather be marked by someone who smells nice. Yeah, exactly. Idea. So why would you put aftershave on if you're, you're a defender? 
Eleven or some. I don't know. Anyway, have you seen anything? What about players wearing coloured boots? Have you been against that? See, I wear yellow boots. Yeah. But not only because of the cheapest ones. <laughs> <laughs> It's one thing, I, I, up until probably five, six years ago, I never had to buy boots. Uh, and now I've got to buy them. And I look at the price of them, and it Daft fucking on, makes me feel yeah. sick. Lads are, lads are paying 200, 250 yeah. pounds for a pair of boots. The worst ones is lads are paying for it, and then they're playing Sunday League. I, mean, I won't pay that for a pair of ones and tools to go out on a Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> but, so I, I hate to pay my boots. So I, wear, I, don't, I don't mind boots, because... If they're comfortable, in, <coughs> fair enough, but I think it's just the attitudes of people, the kids that have changed that that's boils me. Neymar plays like that, oh, isn't it? The rolling about, the, the Instagram about the football. Yeah, well. yeah, oh, I don't yeah. mind the Instagram football, I've got no problem with that. No Are you on Instagram, John? Yeah, I am, yeah. Nice, nice. Follow him. Follow, follow John Parkin on Instagram. <laughs> What's my thing? I don't know what I'm thinking. You know what I think, you know, something like that. But, it's the attitudes of, that, 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 I, that I would say. I mean, we were playing, a, playing for Forest Green away at Braintree, I think we were at. And it's one of them where the ball's running in the corner and it's going to go out for a throw in. And our, lads, our young, like young lads fouled him. You know what you're doing? Mm. So I says, Fuck Kurt, what, what are you doing? He says, what, what? It's going out for a throw in. He went, Wind your neck in, mate. Right? And I'm like, so I'm like, what? I had to process what, what had just gone. I was sort of <clears throat> 33, 34. Give it Ronnie Pickering. Do you know who I am? No, I didn't give him that. I didn't give him that. And then there'd be one of them. Uh, <laughs> wind your neck in, mate, right? So he's sort of 19. He says, fucking wind me neck in. And then I'd gone then. Mm. He says, you fucking ever speak to me like that again? Right? And, I, was, and I, I didn't concentrate on the ball for 10 minutes. Yeah, I was yeah, just shouting it in yeah, for yeah. 10 minutes. The ref had to pull it, stop the game. He said, John, everybody can hear what you're saying. <laughs> like, I'm just like, you fucking... Yeah. Can I say it? And then you'll be yeah, go for you it. You fucking little <laughs> c I'm like that, right? <laughs> so the ref went, John, everybody can hear what you're saying. There's kids here and that. I was like, right. So at half time, I'm still raging. So, gets in the dressing room at half time, I, fuck, I pins him up. So, do you ever fucking speak to me like that again, mate? I'll knock your teeth straight down your fucking throat. All right? So, he's like, oh, sorry, 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 John. A bit like sorry, him with Tyson Fury. Oh, sorry, sorry, John. <laughs> sorry, so, sorry, John. <laughs> so, the manager did his team talk and that, and then I went for a, I went for a wee, uh, and the manager come in and he went, I know what you meant. Just have a word with him for a second, that because we need him. Uh, I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> so I said, manager, I says, I says, the fucking soft as a tub of spunk, mm. these young ones. Uh, but it was the fact that he went, wind your neck in, and I was, yeah, like, yeah. I was like, Did you lose that game? Can you remember? 1 2 1. Ah. Would you say, on the whole, then, like, obviously, you've, you've dropped down a few divisions now, and from the young lads in particular. like a stone, <laughs> <isn't> <laughs> 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 he's had a few oh, gins here we go here we go he's gone here we go yeah. I mean, I'm a sandwich yeah. <laughs> soak it up line that stomach can soak you afford up. two pound a month to feed this young man <laughs> please help <laughs> that's what I'm look at him he's only he's gone 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 he needs his steak mate more than me John he can live in that look Fuck this, like move on, Sasha. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear what you oh, hear. Yeah. Come on, move on. <laughs> Game's gone. <laughs> Game's gone. <laughs> move on. Game's gone. I'm so <laughs> I was so interested in that point. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. Come on. Right. <laughs> let's end it with the perfect 10. Our special guests will have a crack at this, and you can at home too. Click the link in the description. You can win £10,000. Pete. Woo! Thanks, Charlie. <laughs> yeah. If you play and get all 10 right, Right, first fixture, Brighton v Leicester. All we need is Brighton draw or Leicester win. John, you start. Brighton. You, you don't have to agree, by the way. You can alter. Uh, fuck it, I don't agree with fucking things. <laughs> Brighton. Leicester. Are you just going to disagree on everyone? <laughs> <laughs> Fulham v Southampton. I would not want to watch that game. Chris, you start. Southampton. Crowley or Ranieri? Oh, that's a good point. Stop, Stop swearing. Stop <laughs> swearing. Did he name it wrong? Can you go draw or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Hull v Nottingham Forest. Hull. Hull. Forest. 
Oh, I, I, didn't, I didn't go draw, I just yeah, actually yeah. picked one good yeah. draw. Yeah, oh. <laughs> you skipped, you, you skipped off. <laughs> Fulham, Southampton, do you want to go draw? I'm going to go Fulham. Okay. How about v Nottingham Forest? Forest. Forest. Preston v Blackburn. Oh, oh we've got a Blackburn. Anton's looking me. at you. Preston. Oh. We'll have Preston. Oh. We've got a live show there next yeah, Thursday. Right. Right. That's a good call. <laughs> <well. laughs> That's Anthony a few. There's, uh, there's, ten, po- there's ten tickets I left if anybody we're... fancies it. <laughs> I think we've got a real good chance, yeah. Swansea versus Championship leaders Norwich. Norwich. Draw. Ooh. In League One, AFC Wimbledon versus South End. South End. Oh. Wimbledon. Bradford v down. Oxford. Bradford are awful. Yeah, we played against them pre-season, they were crap then. Uh, Oxford. Oxford. Yeah, Bradford is shit. Mm. Plymouth v Fleetwood. Huh. Fleetwood. Plymouth. Wickham v Shrewsbury. Wickham. Shrewsbury. And the final one, this could be a very exciting finish if you're 9 out of 10. The 5.30 kick-off, Tottenham v Chelsea. I've already said Tottenham. I've already said Chelsea. Mm. Excellent, right, that was the perfect 10. From John and Chris, round of applause. Round of applause. Round of applause. Not bad at all. <laughs> Not fucking clapping you. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's give away this amazing Preston yes. shirt, which yes. still isn't here yet. Preston. Lovely. Uh, John, do you want to reveal who's the current manager of Preston? <laughs> will, our, will our followers have got this right? Alan Irvine. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, uh, Alex <laughs> Neal. Sorry, sorry. That's correct. If you put that in the comments, then you're in with a chance of winning. We'll pick a winner and send that shirt out. Right, that's been it for today's Perfect Ten show. Thanks for coming on, Chris and John. Thank Thanks for having us. Pretty decent yeah, show, sure. isn't it? Yeah, not bad. We've got Greg to tuck into yeah, now. Yeah, we've got some tea. Crack the buffy up and make an order like you. <laughs> right, we'll see you lot next time we're on. Thank you very much. <laughs>